Hello everybody, my name is Sikdeep and today I'll be talking about quadratic word problems and the word problem I, I would be doing in quadratics include revenue word problems, projectile problems, right angle triangle problems and rectangle problems. But the first one that we're dealing with is, re uh, is revenue problems. Now the question reads, Brianna is selling t-shirts. Her regular price is $20 per t-shirt and she usually sells about 15 t-shirts. Anne finds that for each reduction in price of $1, she can sell an additional two t-shirts. A. Create an algebraic model to represent Brianna's total sales revenue. And B. Determine the max revenue and the price at which this maximum revenue will occur. Now, whenever I do revenue word problems, I always start off with the basic revenue equation. And that equation is the price per unit multiply the number of units. As you can see in the question, the number, the price per unit is stated here, $20 per t-shirt. So I, that's exactly what I did. I plugged that in for price per unit and then I worked on the second part of the uh, equation which said number of units. Here it says that she sells about 15 t-shirts. So now that I have got um, some basic information I can continue to try to solve this problem. And the next step that we need to do is uh, find a variable because as Brianna said in this uh, as Brianna said in the question she can reduce her price and if she does that she sells an additional two t-shirts. So we have to make a variable that represents the number of changes in price. Now I did that and I got the equation below r equals 20 minus a and 15 plus 2a. Now I got 20 minus a because I noticed that she want I notice that we're talking about price. As you can see here, the first part of the uh, equation is saying price per unit. We're dealing with price. So I saw the next thing in the, the next um, information in the question that allowed me to make a reference with price. And that is this four word, five word um, sentence right here. A reduction in price of one dollar. So I noticed that one dollar is talking about price, so I made it minus because it says reduction. So I did 20 minus A and also I did 15 plus 2A here because then I noticed we're talking about number of units and here it says she's selling 15 t-shirts and she sells an additional two t-shirts. So the word additional tells me that there's addition involved in it and the two t-shirts says right here I put two here and the variable is there because Brianna can make as many reductions in the price as she wants also she can and because of those reductions she, she can sell as many t-shirts as she can you know but we don't know that we're not given that information so we, what we have to assume is that uh, Brianna will sell as many t-shirts as she can at as many as the lowest price that she can. So what we do is we put a variable so that can um, uh, allow us to give us that knowledge. So what I did was I continued the equation I, by expanding it. I expanded it because I wanted to get it into standard form. So I got uh, 20 multiply 15 equals 300, 20 multiply 2a equals 40a, negative a multiply 15 equals negative 15a, and negative a multiply 2a squared equals negative 2a squared. I collected like terms and I got revenue equals negative 2a squared plus 25a plus 300. Now the reason I wanted to find the, the reason I put it into standard form is because it says to determine the maximum revenue and whenever a question especially revenue is talking about to find the maximum we have to uh, we have to find the vertex because that's what the maximum is is basically the vertex so and one way we can do that is by using the quadratic formula which is exactly what I did here
but I took a shortcut by using the formula negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. So I got all my terms, I plugged it in, and I got the axis of symmetry of 6.25. Now that I got the axis of symmetry, I know that in order to find the vertex, I have to plug it into the original equation. That's exactly what I did here, my original equation, I plugged it in. I got uh, the price per unit of 13, I got the price per unit of 13.75 and I got the number of units sold is 27.5 and I multiplied that to get the maximum revenue of $378.125 and the price that the price that Brianna needs to charge to attain a maximum revenue is 300 is 13.75 so that's how much she has to charge in order to get this revenue. Now a second type of problem I'll be solving is a right angle triangle problem. As you can see here, uh, I have the right angle triangle and the only information that is given to us is this image basically. It tells us that the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle is 13 centimeters and the smallest term, the smallest uh, side is x minus 7 and the middle side is x. So with that knowledge I put I put it into uh, the Pythagorean theorem formula. Now the reason I did that is because uh, we have unknown terms that we want to solve and we have to start somewhere so I started with the Pythagorean theorem and all I basically did was I plugged in the terms into the uh, formula. Now what's important to remember is that 13 centimeters have to has to be c squared because the hypotenuse is always the c term in the Pythagorean theorem. So uh, and the a and b it doesn't really matter which form that goes to. So I I, I did 13 multiplied by 13 to get 169 and I expanded this and I expanded this so I can make it into standard form. Now most quadratic um, most quadratic problems will require you to make it into standard form because you either want to find the maximum or minimum or you want to find the zeros. So I made it, I expanded it so I could get it into ex uh, standard form. Now that I got it into standard form I have to set it to zero otherwise I can't solve it. So I set it to zero by bringing 169 to the other side and therefore getting 2x squared minus 14x minus 120. Now I use the quadratic formula because as I said before I want to find the zeros because the zeros will give me two answers uh, that will tell me what x is because the quadratic formula is used uh, to find out the x-intercepts of a graph and instead of using a graph this time we're actually finding out x so I use a quadratic formula I plugged in all my information that I have for example negative b and b squared and a and c I plugged that all in to get the answer 12 so x equals 14 plus 34 divided by 4 is 12. So therefore that means that x is equal to 12. And that means that the sides are 5, 12, and 13. This is because uh, we already have one side, which is 13. And we, we determined that x is equal to 12. And then I did, got 12 minus 7 because it says x minus 7. And x is 12. So that's how I got the answer, right? Answer 5, 12, and 13. And I got a negative answer here, and I didn't use that. The reason you don't use a negative answer is because you cannot have a negative side. That's not possible. Now another problem that I did was a rectangle problem. In this question, they gave me an image and they labeled the terms for me. So all you have to do is realize that uh, the variables are the same 
for one part and for the second part the variables are also for the same so all you have to do is add the variables as I did here 3x there are three x's so I make it 3x and there are two y's so I made it 2y equals to 900 and this because in the question I said there were 900 meters of fencing available so what we are trying to find is how much how much fencing can we use to find so basically we have to find the dimensions so what I did was I brought 3x to the other side so it became 2y equals negative 3x plus 900 then what I did was I wanted to isolate for a variable so I could get what y is and I got y equals negative 3 over 2x plus 450 and I did that by dividing 2 by everything now since we are trying to find the dimensions of a rectangle we need to use a formula area equals length times width instead of using area equals length times width I substituted x and y so because area in this case has to equal x times y so I wrote area equals x and since we don't know x I just left it as it is but we do know what y is y as you can see here is equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 450 so I substituted the I substituted y into the formula I expanded it and again I did st standard form I got in, into standard form and then I got the I, then I use a shortcut negative b over 2a to find the axis symmetry because again in the question they are asking us to find the maximum area also in this question now I got the axis symmetry equals 150 and now the axis symmetry is another way of saying the x value so the x value is 100, 150 and here we can plug that in we found out one half of the dimension which is 150 then what I did was in order to I realized that in order to find the vertex I have to plug in the axis symmetry into the original equation that's what I did here and I got the vertex the maximum area is 33,750 meters squared now I realized that in order for me to find the length I have to uh, divide the maximum area by the width because that will give me the other side so that's what I did I got y equals 33,750 over 150 and the final answer was 225 so therefore the dimensions are 150 multiplied 225 so x is equal to 150 and y is equal to 225 the maximum area is 33,750 meters squared. Now here are the steps to completing the question that I just did, the rectangle optimization question. So first you have to use the image to create an equation. That's what we did here. I realized that I had the image and I realized that uh, I needed to make an equation with the information that I had. So that's what I did, I created an equation then I isolated any variable and solved I forgot to mention here you can isolate for any variable you could have brought 2y to the other side and made it uh, 3x equals to 2 negative negative 2 over 3y you could have done that and you could have solved for x you would have got the same answer either way Step three, substitute variable into length times width formula. That's what I did here. I got whatever answer you will get and I substituted it into the area equals length times width uh, formula. Then what I did was I expanded it because I wanted to get it into standard form. So you, so you expand it. So once in standard form, find the axis symmetry by using negative b over 2a formula once axis of symmetry is found plug into standard form equation this is because you want to find the maximum re uh, maximum area and the answer you will get is the maximum area so divide maximum area by dimension to get a second dimension so the last type of question we have is a projectile question now the projectile question 
So here we have a formula h equals negative 4.9t squared plus 51t plus 1 over 3. In the question, they are asking us to find uh, when will the projectile hit the ground. And for this type of question, it is good to draw an image. Now image... Now your image should look something like this. With the information that you have, you should be able to... Uh, you should be able to create an image that sort of looks like this. So I realize that this equation is in standard form. And it, the one good use for standard form is that uh, it gives you the uh, y-intercept. And in this case, the y-intercept is 1 over 3. So I made a small graph and I realized that 1 over 3 is the y-intercept and I th and I made it go down because the projectile, because what goes up must come down. So the projectile went up and it came down and it hit the ground. And as you can notice here, the when it touches the ground, h equals 0. So, equals 0. So that's why I got 0 equals negative 4.9t squared plus 51t plus 1 over 3. I had the 0 because when we because what we are trying to find is when does the ball hit the ground. And in order for us to do that, we must know what h is or what the height is. And in this case, it's 0. So what I did was I used a quadratic formula. And again, the reason I use a quadratic formula is because I want to find the x-intercepts. And in order for me to do that, uh, I have to solve for x. And as you can see, quadratic formula, we are solving for x because it says x equals 2. So I plugged in all my information into the quadratic formula. I solved it for each step. And the final answers I got was x equals to negative 0 0.02 and x equals to 10.43. Now, the negative answer is correct and it's also incorrect. It's incorrect right now because we don't want to know when the ball uh, was launched off the ground. Because this tells us, the reason I drew it like this is because we don't know what where the ball started from but we realized that the ball started from right here now that we got now that we got the x other x intercept i now know that negative 0.02 is where the ball started from now this is an accurate parabola because if you have a parabola like this actually you can't have a parabola like this because it's not possible a parabola has to be symmetrical so this is the right answer but it's also not the right answer that we need right now we want to know when the ball hits the ground after it's thrown so after it's thrown the ball reaches right here and that point is 10.43 so therefore it takes 10.43 seconds for the projectile to reach the ground now also in some project projectile questions they will ask you for a specific height when or when the ball, how long does it take for the rock projectile to reach a certain height? And in this case, the height that they gave us was 95.7. And what you have to realize is that they are giving you the height. And here, as you can see, this is the original formula, and we need to find the height. But if they already gave you the height, why not plug it in? So that's what I did here. I plugged in. 95.7 which was the height they were asking us to find and I uh, brought it to the other side because again in order to solve you have to make it into zero so then I got the equation negative 4.9 t squared plus 51 t minus 94.4 again I use a quadratic formula plugged in all my values that I have And the answer that I got was negative 1.60 and 12.011. Now again, the question asks us how long does a projectile stay at a height of 95.7 meters. 
Now, in order for us to find that, we have to subtract 